This video is sponsored by Skillshare. As you know, I only take on sponsorships from companies that I absolutely love. So I'll be telling you more about why I chose Skillshare as a sponsor at the end of the video. So stay tuned. Hello, my friend. If you have been around for a while, you know that I have been around for a while. I have had this channel for now officially eight years. Oh my gosh. And a lot of things have changed in the last eight years about what kind of content is on YouTube, what people like to watch, what people are interested in, different products that are out that didn't even really exist back when I first started doing YouTube. So what I wanted to do today is I just wanted to go back just a little bit. Let's go back about four years to 2016. I actually filmed this in the very beginning of 2017 and they were my 2016 products of the year. And I wanna go back and look at the things that I was absolutely loving back then and see whether I still love them or maybe I found replacements for them, things that I like better than them, or maybe they're things that I just forgot about that I wanna revisit. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's reminisce, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. So I started this with products that weren't makeup related. So let's start with the number one shaving product of the year, and that was the Tree Hut Shave Oil. And I have to tell you, <laughs> I still use this stuff. Oh my gosh, this was a discovery that year. I got it, I think in a glossy box is what I had said, which I didn't even remember I'd gotten it in a glossy box, but I still love this stuff. I get this at Ulta. Uh, you can see they've changed the packaging a bit since 2016. They also have a purple one now. It's one, one or the other, doesn't really matter. They just have different scents. And I still love this. This is still the best shave oil I have ever tried. Before I started using this, I was using like the Skin to Mitch Shave Gel and things like that and you know, just it, whatever. I didn't realize how much better this would be. And it's because of the way it glides over the skin. And it just, it's so perfect. <laughs> and, and it doesn't get all gunked up in the razor, so you have to be constantly rinsing it off, not because of hair, but because of the product. So still love this, still think it's amazing. The second product is the Moroccan Oil Hair Mask. And I honestly, I don't think I've used that since this video. I kind of just moved on to other hair masks. So I'll show you the one that I'm using right now. This is the Marc Anthony Instant Miracle Mask. I used to get PR from them, but I haven't gotten anything in quite a long time. I purchased this again at Ulta um, and it's almost gone. I really like this stuff. You'll have to tell me if you use hair masks, whether you see a big difference between one versus another one. I feel like when there's something that's marketed as a very intense hair mask. They all kind of do the same thing. I don't know. And this one is so much cheaper than that one. So unless I could get that one on sale, I would probably just continue to repurchase this one because it's really nice the way that it hydrates my hair. And I don't really see a need to spend that much on a hair mask when I can get one for such a significantly less expensive price. All right, skincare line of the year. Now that just speaks to where I was <laughs> as far as my skincare routine. I actually, you know, I've come quite a long way since 2016. I don't think I was really reviewing a whole lot of skincare back then. When Polish Choice sent me a bunch of things to try, I think that was probably my first experience with trying an entire skincare regimen from a brand that I was sent in PR. Now things are totally different. The makeup space has become so oversaturated. So many people just have enough makeup that skincare is becoming more popular. You notice places like ColourPop and Fenty Fenty Beauty and Makeup Revolution, they are all coming out with skincare lines. Why? Because they know that people are getting super into skincare and that's just not the way it was in 2016. So as far as Paula's Choice being the best skincare line of the year, I didn't really have a ton to compare it to, to be completely honest, but looking back and how those products affected my skin and looking at the ingredients of the products that I was sent back then, I'll link the Polish Choice video down below so you can check it out. I would imagine if I did repurchase that stuff that I would still really, really like it a lot. Um, the Resist line specifically is just extremely well formulated. A lot of their products I look at and I go, wow, that's, that's nice. That looks really nice. As far as replacing Polish Choice, I don't think I've tried much that would completely replace that line. 
I really like the Derma E Polypeptide Cream. That stuff is amazing. That's definitely been a favorite. I would show you my current skincare routine, but my current skincare routine isn't really like my favorite. I'm really just trying new products and some of them I just started using. So it's not really relevant to this video. I'm sure you'll see that stuff in favorites and fails coming up, but it's just not really a good thing to put in this video. But I will tell you the Derma E Polypeptide Cream would probably be in there because again, it's less expensive and it's got a lot of really nice ingredients in it. And if I think of anything else besides that one, that seems like the biggest one in my mind um, that's standing out just off the top of my head. But if I think of anything else, I'll list it in the video description for you. Hair styling tool. Oh my gosh. I love that stinking beach waver. I love that thing. And I still have it. I still have both of them. They still work great. But not long after that, I want to say, well, maybe it was like a year after that, I got my hair extensions. So if you have not seen me use these, I don't know how long, um, how many of my videos you've watched. But this up here is my real hair. And then down here, this is all a halo hair extension. So there's a band that goes around my head and I tuck my real hair over top of it. Well, I tuck my fake hair underneath it. <laughs> And I put my real hair over top of it and it blends pretty nicely even with my grays growing in. But because of my extensions, I haven't been curling my hair as much. So I'll show you what my favorite hair tool is that I've been using recently that I really like. And this was actually part of a FabFitFun. And this is the Amika hair straightener and it just works great. Is it anything that is like over the top, you must buy it? No, but it works and it does everything that I want it to do. And I love it. I do do sponsor videos for FabFitFun, but they don't know that I meant mentioning this. I'm not getting paid to mention it again, but this is legit what I use every time I get out of the shower. I use this. It works great. Favorite brush brand was Moda. I still love my Moda brushes. They're fabulous. I find myself personally reaching for my Sigma brushes more. I find that they just work just a little bit better. Also, the shapes of them tend to be a little bit more effective, I guess I could say. Uh, I do get PR from both companies, but I've been leaning more toward my Sigma ones recently, even though the Moda ones really are great, especially if you're just looking for basic eye brushes, you know, a basic blending brush, a basic br uh, brush to pat onto your eyelids, a basic blush brush, things like that. Moda is perfect. It's fantastic. But I have to admit, I've been reaching for my Sigma ones more lately. For foundation, my favorite foundation at the time was the e.l.f moisturizing foundation stick. I've actually moved away from foundation sticks. I really like the Milk Makeup one um, and I really like the e.l.f. one, but I don't know, something about blending it out, I don't know. I just, I prefer a liquid. It's just more of a nitpick than anything. If I just only had my Milk Makeup or my e.l.f. Uh, foundation stick, I'd be fine with that, but you know, because I have other options, I usually choose other options. So some of my current favorites are the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made. This was PR, uh, let's see, yeah. And then for, this was more full coverage. For more of a medium coverage, the Flower Beauty Light Illusion. This is purchased. Um, and if you want something that's more high end, is there really that big of a difference between this and these? Not really that big of a difference, but it is really nice. I really like my La Mer uh, foundation. For something that is more light coverage, the Purely BB Cream is my favorite. For concealer, I cannot believe my favorite was Tarte Shape Tape. Really, Jen? Really? Maybe my under eyes weren't as wrinkly then, which is possible. <laughs> <laughs> they are now, but that stuff, I mean, I guess you, as long as you're real light with that stuff, it's really not that bad, but I definitely would not say Tarte Shape Tape is my favorite anymore. I think I also was kind of giving into the hype a little bit if I'm going to be 100% honest, but you, I really had to go super light on it. Ones that I prefer now are actually all drugstore ones are my favorites, um, dropping things. So the Pacifica liquid cover, full coverage one, I really like a lot. This one, this one's... This was purchased. No, this was gifted to me by a friend. This is the Makeup Obsession one. I actually really like this. This is the Mega Conceal. It's a little bit more medium coverage. I wouldn't say it's a Mega Conceal, but it's a nice conceal. Uh, and this was PR, and then this was purchased. This is my current favorite. This is the e.l.f. one. This is called Fair Beige, and this is right now my absolute favorite. If you are not uh, wanting to get this one from e.l.f., I remember the ColourPop one, I, I think is very, very similar to this one. I actually use that one up all the way through, which says a lot because I don't use products up that often. So ColourPop one was also fabulous. 
eyeshadow primer. I still love my Ulta eyeshadow primer. I still think that it is absolutely fabulous, but I've actually kind of reverted back to a favorite from even before then, which is the MAC Paint Pot. And apparently I've been using this quite a bit and I really like it. Right now I'm trying the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas, Clean Canvas? Cover can what is this stuff called? Hold on. I got it right. I was second guessing myself. The Clean Canvas by Gerard Cosmetics is what I've been testing right now and I think this might be a contender. My only gripe about this so far is that you really can only use the teeniest, tiniest amount. If you use too much, it gets to be kind of a mess. So it's just a little bit difficult to work with in that way, but I've been really enjoying this a lot. I've also really been enjoying the Makeup by Mario one that I've been using since uh, for a couple of weeks, but I can't really put those in favorites right now because I just haven't been using them long enough, but I would definitely say the MAC Paint Bot and Painterly has become my favorite again. This one made me laugh eyebrows. I was using the Benefit Cabrow. Do you remember when the brow pomades were the thing? <laughs> the block brows were the thing. I remember getting so many comments about how my brows were not carved enough. My brows were not crisp enough. I, I never liked the way that looked on me, so I felt like the Cabrow kind of gave me a little bit of that pomade look without being overwhelming and blocky, and I was really happy when that wasn't an expectation anymore to have block brows. And now, honestly, like, I feel like if you are a makeup brand and you don't have a good brow pencil, like, what are you doing with your lives? I feel like pretty much every brow brand that has a brow pencil has a good one at this point. Uh, I'll list a bunch of them here on the screen of a bunch of them that I enjoy. I have so many brow pencils and honestly, I could pick up one or the other one. As long as it's the right shade, it really doesn't matter which one I grab. They're all pretty much the thing the same. Eyeshadow palette, my favorite right then was the ABH Modern Renaissance, along with so many other people. And one thing that I've learned about the ABH formula that I'm not as big of a fan of, that I didn't mind then, is the, um, the kick up in the pan and how gentle you just have to be with that formula. It's very, very easy to overdo it. I feel like with my trying of a bunch of other formulas with Sydney Grace and Sigma and uh, Natasha Denona, and, well, some of the Natasha Denona palettes, not necessarily all of them, I feel like like, it, you know, a, a highly pigmented palette like an ABH palette just is a little bit more difficult to work with. I still absolutely love my Sultry palette. That's still by far my favorite ABH palette of all time. I just find that I enjoy using other palettes more just because there's more room for error and I need more room for error. Let's just be completely honest here. Andy eyeshadow, I said Juvia's Place. I still love my Juvia's Place eyeshadows very, very much. My only complaint about them that I've learned, and, and as I've gotten older, it's become more of a problem, is their shimmer formula. It transfers up on me throughout the day. So when I put one of their really beautiful metallic foiled shades all over my lid, by the time I'm three, four hours in, it's transferred to here. And it just doesn't look cute. So right now I'm more preferring uh, Colored Rain and also Sydney Grace. Those are my favorite indie brands right now as far as eyeshadows and Makeup Geek for the matte formula. Really, really love those. Okay. Contour palette and highlight palette. I don't really use contour palettes and highlight palettes anymore. I mostly go for singles. Is that weird? I don't know. Do you use more singles for face products or are you more into palettes? So I don't really use those that much anymore. They're still fine. They still work well, but I just don't use them that much. And you can tell I was super into ABH because they were both from ABH. What I'm reaching for as far as bronzing or contouring really depends on the day, but I find that I'm reaching for these the most, the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. This is, seems to just look really nice on my skin right now. I don't know. And then the It Cosmetic Celebration Foundation. This was sent in PR. Uh, this was purchased. This is in the shade light and it's too dark for me. So I use this to just kind of deepen up you know, the contour area and sometimes the bronzy areas, contour areas, I don't know. I feel like it's all blended now. It used to be that contouring was always a cool tone and bronzing was a warm tone. And now I feel like people are doing this, whether they call it contouring or bronzing, it's the same thing now. Have you noticed that? Is it just who I'm watching that seems to do, you know, use those terms interchangeably? It didn't used to be like that. 
I don't know. And then as far as highlighting, what I'm reaching for the most are my Ofra highlighters. This was PR, uh, and I do have a personal relationship with Ofra. This is the highlighter in all of the lights. I reach for this one the most. And this was also in a FabFitFun, I believe. Again, I do do sponsor videos for them, but they don't know that I'm mentioning this. I use this all the time. This is the Milk Makeup Stick in Mars, and this is absolutely beautiful. For blush, my favorite blushes were the Balms Instain blushes. Those things really are fantastic blushes. They took them away for a while, but I heard that they are back. They're just really nice, long wearing, highly pigmented blushes that don't go on. So thick like clown face. They're nice and buildable. They're just great blushes. What I've been reaching for most recently are these M Cosmetics blushes. These were set in PR. So this is the one in Magic Hour. Oh my gosh, they're just so beautiful. And they're, again, they're buildable and they just blend so beautifully into the skin. Just a really nice nice formula. And then finally for lipstick, I mean, I did like the Bare Minerals Gen Nude lipsticks. They're still good. I haven't purchased them since mine essentially went bad. I had used a bunch of them pretty much all the way up, but then I had some that ended up just, they were old. They just needed to be thrown away. It's still a nice creamy formula, but you know I'm using my Ofra once more. I did a collab with Ofra on liquid lipsticks, so those are gonna be the ones that I'm going to obviously pick. I wouldn't have done a collab with them I did if I didn't absolutely love their formula. And I honestly, I do use my collab products almost every single time I do my lipsticks. Not every time, but I would say seven out of 10 times, I'm using one of my uh, collaboration shades from the Metamorphosis Trio. So today I did use the M Cosmetics because uh, this was just sent to me in PR and I wanted to try it. This is the lip cushion in the shade Venetian Rose. And then I used just a little bit of Reimagine to deepen it up just a little bit. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. When Skillshare contacted me to sponsor this video, I was honestly very skeptical because I don't feel like I have time to take online classes, but I gave it a chance and I tried a productivity masterclass by Ali Abdal. He taught me how to have time to do things like take online classes by maximizing my time throughout the day. The course was easy to understand and practical and immediately applicable and made me excited about implementing the strategies that he suggested. I also love that I could speed up the playback like I do with podcasts so that it moved at a pace that's comfortable for my ADHD brain. I binged the entire two hour course and to make the most out of my downtime, love that tip from Ali, I popped over to a course on knife skills while I was making dinner and learned how to efficiently chop an onion without crying my eyes out. I seriously cannot wait to explore the other classes on Skillshare. And if you would like to try a class for yourself and you are one of the first 1000 people to sign up using the link in the description box, you will get a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership. And then if you decide you love it, you can and sign up with a yearly subscription at less than $10 a month. Thank you so, so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it and I hope that you love it as much as I do. At this point, my friend, it is your turn. In the collective brain of Makeup Awesomeness where we help each other to not buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it, I would love your thoughts on anything I talked about in this video today or if there were products that you were using back in 2016 or somewhere around there that you either still absolutely love or products that you just don't use anymore that have been completely replaced in your collection, I would love to know down in the comments down below. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you are not already subscribed, please subscribe before you go so you don't miss my future content. But if you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a video for you right down there to watch. But if it is your time to go, it is absolutely no problem at all. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. Mad love to you and I will see you in a video very, very soon.